Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps, and today we're going to talk about in-fed half-wave antennas. In-fed half-wave antennas are very popular, and for good reason. They're a relatively efficient antenna that's very simple to deploy in numerous configurations. Now, whenever you take an antenna or a resonant antenna and you feed it from the end, you have a very high impedance at that feed point, and that necessitates the use of a transformer uh, such as this. This is just a FT24043 toroid. It's wound in a 49 to 1 configuration. They're popular and most of your designs are using something similar to this right here. Now the elephant in the room when it comes to antenna transformers is that antenna transformers always have a certain amount of loss to them. Now we talked a lot about transformer loss when I did my Chameleon Impost video because that's an example of a transformer, the Hybrid Micro, that actually has a considerable amount of loss in it. Now the benefit of that is is it makes the radio happy because you think it's got this amazing match across an entire swath of frequencies when in fact what it's doing is, is it's just so inefficient that you're dumping a bunch of RF into it and you're not getting much out. Is it a dummy load? No not by any stretch of the imagination. However, there are more efficient examples. And the same thing comes to when you're building your transformers for this, and we're gonna discuss this right now. Now there are several popular transformer designs for the NFED half-wave antenna, and we're not gonna talk about the QRP ones. We're gonna talk about the ones you would use for a 100 watt radio for like an MCOM purpose or something of that nature. So our most common one is the FT24043 toroid. Wound in a 49 to 1, two primaries in 14 turns overall with a crossover. Very popular and used in many commercial versions of an in-fed half-wave antenna. The second transformer is also wound on an FT24043. This is wound in a 64 to 1, so you've got three primary turns and 24 turns overall with a crossover. Our third transformer is wound on a ferrite. 264 325 1002 and this is a 49 to 1 transformer and they're equally as dense as the FT24043 and they're in a much more compact profile they can handle as much power as one of these as well I had never seen one of these before until I was browsing around the internet and I came across a couple of different YouTube creators that had done content on these and one was MM0OPX and Evil Lair Electronics. After watching their content, I decided to pick up several of these from DigiKey, and I've actually had very good luck with this transformer. And I'm going to put this in the mix. We're going to test this transformer against these two. And then I'm going to show you how to build one of these for yourself. This is our 49 to 1 transformer wound on an FT24043 with crossover that's being subjected to conditions of open, short, and load and swept with my rig expert. Now, most just pay attention to the load line and think that all is good, but the concerning lines to pay attention to are either the open lines or the shorted lines. Now, when either the open or short lines are closer to resonance than, like, let's say, 5 to 1, it indicates that the transformer is exhibiting loss. As a matter of fact, if those lines were all the way at the top there or off the scale, it would indicate a much more efficient transformer. Now, how lossy is this transformer? Let's find out. And we're looking at 1.4 dB per device at 80, 1.2 dB per device at 40, 1.2 dB per device at 20 and 1.7 dB, 1.75 dB at 10 meters. Now let's do a transmitter test. We're going to use my FT757GX tuned for the 20 meter band and we're going to generate a 100 watt FM signal and it's going to be terminated in a dummy load. We're going to measure the power output of the radio on my watt meter here. And then what we'll do is, is we'll go ahead and cease transmitting, and then we're going to hook up our transmitter to our transformers here. And going through both transformers, we're going to see 
exactly how much power is lost across both these transformers and see if that jives with our results that we saw with the spectrum analyzer. Then it also shows us just how much heat builds up in both of these transformers where they're in service like that after a two minute continuous power key down. Now it's important to understand that transformers end up having a lot of heat build up due to inefficiencies and loss. Okay let's get started. We're going to turn the transmitter on. Right now we're looking at around 95 watts of RF into my meter. Take our starting temperatures. Seventy six, and seventy six, and you can see how much power we've lost across these two transformers here. And take that number down, and we'll be right back after a couple minutes. Time for a temperature check. Looks like about a hundred and fifteen. And on our other one, here is our open, short, and load sweep of our 64 to 1 transformer on an FT24043. And what should be obvious from looking at this is, is that the low frequency performance of this transformer is going to be much better than the 49 to 1 on a 24043. Although it looks like the performance is really going to fall off above 20 meters. We're looking at 0.65 dB per device at 80, about the same at 40. At 20 meters we're looking at 1 dB a loss and man we're looking at 6 dB per device at 10 meters. Here is the open, short, and load sweep of the transformer wound on the ferrite 264 325 1002, and it's wound with 18 gauge enameled magnet wire, close wound, directly tapped without the bifolar winding, like seen in many other designs. And you can see that it's a much better sweep than the previous two transformers. Uh, it's got that interesting little dip just south of 17 meters, but overall this is a good transformer sweep. Well, let's see how we stack up. We're looking at 80 at less than a half a dB per device. We're looking at about 1 dB per device at 40, at 20, 7 tenths of a dB. And at 10 meters we're looking at less than one and one tenth of a dB per device. 76, 77. Same here. Let's do our temperature check. And here's all the results written out here for you. The different devices are here, and this is the losses per device that was measured with the spectrum analyzer and the different bands measured. And then I averaged it, of course, of the 64 to 1, if you took that 10 meter one out of there, its performance wouldn't be nearly as bad. But again, that transformer does not perform very well at high frequencies. This is the amount of RF loss per device observed at 20 meters, and you can see that here. And then the amount of temperature change in the transformers after that two minute key down. Uh, one thing if you looked at the thermal on this particular transformer is that all of your heat, of course, is concentrated right here in the area of the windings. So the Cliff's notes on this entire experiment is that this transformer here has 
half of the loss of our conventional 49 to 1 wound on an FT24043, which is good. And it's not tremendous. However, you know, anything you can save by having a more efficient transformer is going to help you in the long run. So now we're going to talk about how you can build one of these yourself. The uh, cost of building something like this is less than $10 invested in materials. Of course, you've got your time involved, but it doesn't take very long to build it. And I'm going to give you a class on that right now. These are real easy to crank out. Take your ferrite and we're going to go ahead and insulate it first or insulate where the feed point's going to be. So I just use fiberglass tape. you want to cut it about the width of your toroid this right here is going to be fine I'm just going to go ahead and double it up just like that place that on your ferrite get yourself some 18 gauge enamel magnet wire cut yourself 40 inches of it start your first turn Like this here. Then make your second turn. Go through the center. After you've completed two wraps on the inside, on your third wrap on the outside, because we have this laying over to retain it, Go ahead and remove just enough insulation, maybe an eighth of an inch of insulation, where you're going to tie in. Now remove the insulation from where your feed point's going to be. I just use a razor blade. Now tend your feed point. Line up your feed point, go ahead and continue winding. Take about one inch of your running into the wire, clamp it in the vise, pull gentle pressure to hold this tight like that, then roll it on itself, roll it back over again, and then again then back up and now you just take your wire and guide it through again pulling it down to here placing it in the vise and repeating the process when you've completed winding you should have 14 closely spaced turns take a small tool under where your feed point is and make so you have enough room to slide through the wire. Now take the piece of wire you're going to use, make a small bend in it, place it underneath your feed point, and you could use the same magnet wire you made it out of. Just make sure you remove the enamel first, and you can take and fold this back over on itself like such. Then to solder that in place. Just like that. Now take your piece of wire you had folded over, fold it over to this point here. Go ahead and remove your enamel from it here, and then we're going to tie our capacitor across here and here. And that's all there is to it. We've got our capacitor in place, body of RF connector goes here, center conductor goes here, antenna goes here. Very, very simple. And that's pretty much it. It's a cool project to make. You can amaze your friends. 
And don't be afraid to experiment. Like I said, I made this one here with Teflon insulated wire. And it doesn't perform quite as well as this one does in my testing, but it looks kind of neat anyway. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.